Now, this is very serious. As you know, I've been focused a lot on China because I believe 20 years from now, if we don't reverse course, China will be the most powerful country on the face of the earth, if not 20, 30, 40 years. China is on the move. China has stolen much of our technological know-how. China uh, applies a great deal of its gross domestic product to its weaponry. We're hollowing ourselves out. We're eviscerating our military. And China's doing the opposite. Even the great spiritual feeling you have for our nation, you know, that you grew up with, that you learned in school and that sort of thing, it's not taught anymore. Said America is a racist, former slave-owning country, and imperialist, colonialists, this, this, that, ist. Anyway, the dummy who is president. You know, let, let's just stop. This should be a cakewalk for a Republican president at this point. There's no economic growth of any uh, serious type. We're going backwards on jobs, and we have been for years and years under this uh, buffoon. You got the border open with everybody and their mother coming across. His foreign policy is a disaster. I mean, is it really that hard to run against Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama? They have records, and their records really suck. The problem is, if you make everything personal, or if you take a position where you're begging Bernie Sanders supporters to support you, you're not effectively able to compare and contrast. Now look at this with, uh, with China, the Washington Times. A retired Japanese admiral says Obama's strategy to neutralize China's territorial claims to a man-made reef in the South China Sea are almost entirely meaningless and may actually serve to embolden the communist regime. You've got to listen to this. Retired Jap Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force Rear Admiral Kawamura the former vice commandant of the Joint Staff College, told the Sekai Nippo that, quote, the Obama administration's strategy of freedom of navigation is intended to be a gesture indicating they do not recognize the seas around the artificial islands as territorial waters. But I think this is almost entirely meaningless. Follow this. He said what the U.S. is currently doing is called innocent passage. Innocent passage refers to passage through a nation's territorial waters by another nation's military vessels within 12 nautical miles of the shore, taking only the minimum of action necessary and without causing any alarm or intimidation. Stay with me. The passage of military vessels is permitted so long as it's an innocent passage. According to the statements by the United States Department of Defense, U.S. naval vessels are making innocent passage. That's to say, their actions imply that they recognize that the area as Chi that area as Chinese territorial waters, which has the opposite of the intended effect. So in other words, when our military ships go through these areas within 12 miles of these fake islands, they claim that they're making innocent passage. When they're claiming they're making innocent passage, what that means is they are accepting the control of the South China Sea by the red Chinese government. Otherwise, they don't need to proclaim anything. The retired admiral said allies standing against China in the South China Sea need to make more provocative military actions. He said they must be actions that are not innocent passage, namely circumnavigating the artificial islands and military vessels, stopping, dropping anchor, and launching aircraft. He went on. That said, it is no use leaving it up to the United States alone. Any military response must be done jointly with participation by J Japan and other nations around the world, such as Australia. What I mean to say, he said, is that China is currently explaining the military actions of the United States to its citizens as America unilaterally disturbing the peace in the South China Sea. And it is using this to stir up domestic discontent. Therefore, rather than America acting alone, there must be multinational action to make the people of China understand that it's the international community as a whole which stands in opposition. And he goes on. So what's happening is China is methodically taking over the South China Sea. Mark, who gives a crap? You give a crap. An enormous amount of the world's economic activity comes through that part of the world. Moreover, we have allies there. Japan, South Korea, the Philippines, Taiwan, even Vietnam is begging us for help because China's a big bully. Now, in addition to controlling the South China Sea because Obama is surrendering it, 
They've now claimed the airspace over the South China Sea. Meaning, if we want to send our commercial aircraft or our military aircraft over or close to the South China Sea, which covers an enormous area, folks, look at a map, Google it. The Red Chinese are claiming that they control it and they have to approve it. And we got a report the other day, I couldn't verify it, but I believe it, that when Obama was visiting J uh, Vietnam and later Japan, they went around the airspace or they sought the permission of the Chinese to do it. Now this is why Obama should really be easy to respond to if you're in the Trump campaign. And this is why he is an utter and complete disaster. For a thousand reasons. If I were to write a book on the Obama disasters, it wouldn't be a book. It would be a volume of 25 books. It'd be like the Britannic Encyclopedia, those of you who remember. Let's start with A and go to B, and B and go to C, and C and go to D. 10,000, 20,000, 100,000. No, more like a million words, actually. A complete disaster. And that's why Hillary Clinton should be limping right now, politically. She's a disaster. He's a disaster, Obama. And she's leading. I know it's early. I got it. But still, she's leading in Kansas? Oh, Kansas.